Presenting The Whisperer, starring Carlton Young. The Whisperer, a brilliant man who, losing his voice in an accident which crushed his vocal cords, worked his way deep within the crime syndicate to help destroy it from within. To the underworld, his familiar rattling hiss is the voice of authority, to be obeyed without question. Then the miracle of surgery performed by Dr. Benjamin Lee restored his natural voice, enabling him to resume his real identity. Now, as Philip Gault, aggressive young attorney, he skirts the thin edges of death, living his dual role. For as the whisperer, he sets in motion the forces of the syndicate in Central City. Then, as Philip Gault uses his knowledge to fight the organized network of crime, which seeks to control the fate of millions in cities and towns across the nation. In Dr. Lee's office, we find Ellen Norris, the doctor's nurse and the only other person besides the doctor who knows of Phil's dual identity, watching anxiously as Phil, speaking in the voice of the whisperer, makes his report to a superior in the syndicate. What does it mean, Phil? You mean specifically? I don't know. It's designed to set something in motion right now. Someone's murder. When the syndicate gives that kind of an order, it usually is, means at least one murder. And you had to pass the instructions on. Just another indication how the syndicate works, Ellen. One hand never knows what the other hand is doing. This Slade is probably from out of town. He has his instructions already. All he was waiting for was the word to start. I had to give it to him. Every other time, Phil, you had a lead of some kind to help. You knew who the victim was, you knew what was going to happen, and, and you could do something about it. But now... Yes, I... What are you doing, Phil? The only lead I have is the telephone number where I reached Slade. But how are you... The phone company won't give it to me, but the police can get the address. Lieutenant Denver? Mm-hmm. Excuse me, honey. A uh, homicide, please. I have an idea the lieutenant's already suspicious of your extra-legal activities, Phil. How long... Uh, hi, Lieutenant... Need a favor. Uh-huh. I've got a phone number. I need the address. Cheshire, 1789. That's right. Uh, no, it's just a little checking on a client. Yeah, I'm at Ellen's office. Thanks. He must be in a good mood. The lieutenant's plenty smart, Ellen. He knows I wouldn't want the address for any reason that might kick back. Little does he know. In this case, what he doesn't know might save him some grief. If you can stop whatever it is from happening. Yes, if. Uh, sweetheart, uh -huh. it's kind of late, and I'm going to be on the move pretty soon. How's about meeting you later for supper? You can get a sandwich now, maybe take a show or something, and then I'll join you. Mm -mm. Well, it's past dinner time already, and you haven't had anything to eat since lunch. I know. I'm starving. Well, then... And every time I have an appointment with you for dinner, it's always delayed anywhere from three to five hours. Well, you see what I mean? The best thing right now is for you to grab a bite and meet me later. Consequently, since I'm a creature of habit... I've got myself into the habit of irregular dinner hours. Well, now's your chance to get regular. I'm staying with you. But don't you... No buts. I'd be wondering about what was happening all the time. Ruin my digestion. I'm with you, lover. No, wait a minute. Hello? Oh, yes. Hello, Lieutenant. Uh-huh. Yes, I know where that is. Uh-huh. Well, thanks. I'll split my fee with you on this case. Got the address? Yes. You're not very happy about it. Well, it isn't a house. It isn't listed under any name. It's the Lyceum Theater. A pay station backstage. Oh? Coming? With you, lover. Oh, look what's playing, Phil. Romeo and Juliet. Oh, that would be a nice way to spend an evening in a theater. Maybe it'll be more entertaining backstage. Not that I don't think you're brilliant, darling, but just how are you going to get any information if that phone was a pay station? 
seems to me this job's just about hopeless. Just about hopeless for the somebody on the other end, too, Ellen. We've got to try. Here we are. Let me do the talking. Don't I always? What can I do for you? Hello, old timer. We're looking for someone. I figured that. Who? A fellow by the name of Slade. Slade? That's right. Don't know any Slade. Not connected with the company? Nope. Can anybody come off the street and use that payphone on the wall over there? Nope. Anybody use it in the last half hour? Nope. Oh, say, wait a minute. Yeah, there, there was somebody come along with Judy. Hung around the phone right around 7.30. When it rang, he answered it. Just was for him, all right. I see. You say he came in with Judy? Uh-huh. Can we speak to her? Well, if you want to wait around, you probably can. She went out about five minutes ago. Went out? With the man who answered the phone? A minute after. She asked me which way he went, and she went out. Kind of in a hurry, too. And she's due on the stage in about 15 minutes. If she don't get back quick, they'll probably have to use her understudy. I see. Uh, you don't know where she went, do you, old-timer? Well, she lives across the street and down a block. Hathaway's. Hathaway's? Second-hand furniture store. Her uncle owns it. Living quarters upstairs. She lives there now to be near the theater. Thanks. Uh, but she ain't there. Oh? Leastways, she's not answering the phone there. Doville, the director, called and got no answer. Oh, well, thanks. Let's go, Ellen. Half the ways. Half the... Oh, here it is. How do you do? Mr. Hathaway? Vladimir Hathaway, at your service. Uh, we're looking for a young lady by the name of Judy. Oh, why, Judy's at the theater down the street. She's appearing in Romeo and Juliet. But I don't think you'll be able to speak to her, not until she's off stage. Well, she's not there. She came home. She does live here. Uh, why, of course. Uh, Judy's my niece. Of course she lives here, uh, upstairs. Uh, but she isn't home. I'd know if she were. She left here almost an hour ago. And didn't come back? No, no, of course not. Oh. Quite a shop you have here. Uh, thank you. Uh, could I interest you in some furniture? I, I have a dining room set that's almost new right over no, here. No, thanks. A lounge chair? Most comfortable thing in the world. Well, we'll think of you when we set up housekeeping. Oh, I, I thought you were... Married? Not yet. Uh, Judy has a friend by the name of Slade, hasn't she? Slade? Why, uh, n not that I know of. You know anybody by that name? Uh, no, no, I... Well, I don't think we can do any good here, Ellen. Is something wrong with Judy? For a loving uncle, you finally came around to getting concerned. I don't know if anything's wrong. But, but if anything is wrong, I would like to know. We're trying to reach a fellow by the name of Slade, and Judy apparently knows him. Oh, I see. But perhaps... Uh... One of her active friends. I don't know them all. It's hard to keep track of. Phil. I heard it. I, I beg pardon. That was a shot. Where's the stairway to the upstairs? A shot? That's right. Where is it? I, I am a little hard of hearing. But what kind of shot you... Pistol, if I'm not hard of hearing. Where's the stairs? But if it's a shot... Stop stalling, Hathaway. Ellen, try that door. Here, Phil. Yes, through that door and up the stairs to the right. It was a shot, Phil. I know. Through here, Ellen. On the floor. I see him. Phil? He's dead. I shot him. Better let me have the gun, Judy. I shot him. Slade? I, I shot him. All right, you shot him. Is his name Slade? Yes. Better give me the gun, Judy. No. Come on, Judy. No. What's happened? Judy, where's David? Stay away. All of you, get back. You can't run away. Stay back. Quick after her. Locked. Come on, Hathaway, a little help here. Come on, let's go. Now, let's try this one. Locked, too. Any other way out, Hathaway? Locked? Any other way out? Uh, yes, uh, through that back door, but it opens on an alleyway. Oh, it and... doesn't matter. She's gone by this time. What's this room? What do you do here, behind the showroom? I, I do stone cutting, a hobby. They're gone. Gone? What's gone? My diamonds. You cut diamonds My for a diamonds. hobby? David, 
David took them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the second time David's cropped up. Who's David? He must have taken them. All right, now, who is David? They, they were going to get married. David and Judy, all arranged. When the show closed, get married. Were they here when we came in? Yes, upstairs with, with Judy. And Slade? Yes. You lied to us then? Yes, I was afraid. Slade came in and started talking to me about buying some furniture, just waiting. And then Judy came running in, and they both went upstairs. David was there. Not when we got there. How did he get out? Probably hiding right in this room here when we went upstairs. All right, Mr. Hathaway. You better call the police. Police? Oh, yes. The diamonds... No, Hathaway. The dead man. Homicide. Yes. Yes, Judy shot him. That's right. But he had a gun in his hand, Hathaway. It was probably self-defense. Operation X-22. What's that? A dragnet. A syndicate dragnet. For Judy? Uh Uh-huh. Poor frightened kid. To to kill her? Her and David Clark. Why? If I knew that, I'd probably understand a lot of things, Ellen. Like why Hathaway is such a confounded liar. What chance does she have, Phil? None. What are we going to do? Try to find her before the syndicate does. Try to find her. All right, Phil. Finish your sandwich. Mm Mm-mm. I've just lost my appetite. You are listening to The Whisperer, the story of Philip Galt, who skirts the thin edges of death, living his dual role. A dragnet. Not a police dragnet, but a syndicate dragnet. More deadly, more vicious, with orders to shoot on sight. Philip Gault, in his guise as the whisperer, has passed along the syndicate's orders. And now, without knowing where Judy Forrest is, he must protect her from the dragnet he himself set in motion. Seems like such a hopeless task, finding Judy. We have one lead, Hathaway. Seems like such a bewildered kind of man, Phil. Much too bewildered. What do you mean? Those diamonds of his, for one thing. What about them? Diamonds in a broken-down place like that? And first he said they were his stones, a hobby. 
Then he said it was part of a job and they belonged to someone else. No, Alan, something's wrong there. You didn't have to take the car if you wanted to go back to a store, Phil. You're going past it now. Uh-huh. Why? In case the store is being watched. By whom? The syndicate, Ellen. This is a logical place for them to pick up a lead, too. We just walk in off the street, we look like customers. We drive up, they take special notice of us and the car. Oh. We'll park down here and walk back. Phil, you know, any ideas why Judy shot that slave fellow? None. Or how David is mixed up in it? No. But I can take a guess. Okay. What's your guess? My instructions to Slade were now. That's right. We find Slade in Judy's apartment. Therefore, whatever Slade was going to do, it had something to do with Judy or... David. Yes. And Hathaway said David and Judy were going to be married. Mm-hmm. And Slade was probably going to kill one of them. Maybe both. Oh, all right, so far. Now, what about the diamonds? What about David taking them? That's something I can't even guess about. Here we are. Yes? Can I help you? I thought the police would be here by now, Hathaway. Police? You know, the body upstairs. Body? Upstairs? I don't understand. Oh, so that's the way you want to play. Ellen. Yes, Phil? Take a look up there. All right. You, you must be mistaken. There is no, no body upstairs. I can't understand what you mean. Who took it away? You must excuse me. I'm very busy. And what about the diamonds that were stolen? Reported that yet? Diamonds? Stolen? I have no diamonds. Now, please, I, I don't know what that young woman is looking for. In don't you, Hathaway? My, my God, you're choking. A woman's life is at stake, Hathaway. No, he's not there. There's nobody up there. I know. Well, Hathaway... Uh, uh... What do you want? Where's Judy? I don't know. What do you know, Hathaway? Do you know the syndicate has a dragnet out for her? No, I don't. Oh, yes, yes. I don't know where she is. They will kill me. They will. Who will? The syndicate. The diamonds. Cutting them up and passing them along. Part of the syndicate. A small link in the chain. David. What about him? He stole them from me. I'm responsible for them. I don't know what they'll do to me now. What about Slade? I don't know about him. David, part of the syndicate, wanted to quit. Judy wanted him to quit so they could get married. She didn't want him involved in... So Slade uh, came uh, around to kill David? Yes. And Judy shot uh, Slade to prevent him from killing David? Yes, yes, please. Please, you've got to protect me. They, they came and took Slade away. They must be watching this place. They, maybe even now, they know you are here. They know I talk to you. Where's Judy? I, I don't know. I swear to you, I don't know. And David? You are... You are not with the syndicate. I'm trying to help Judy. Yes. I don't know where he is. But I can tell you where he lives. Where? 1677 Cedar Lake Drive. Have you told anybody else? No, no. Didn't they ask you? I told them I did not know. David is a good boy, really. I don't want his life on my conscience. And Judy? Maybe she's there with him. She's my niece. Really, she is. I love her. I love her like she was my own child. Comes out in the night, out of all the dirty, rotten cesspools. The slimy things, arms and tentacles of the octopus syndicate. Touching a good kid, touching a girl whose only sin is to love someone caught in their web. Please, you, you can't do anything. You can't stop them. You don't know them. When they start out to do something... They finish it. Yeah. Well, what about those stones? Why'd David take them? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe because he wanted to hit back at them. Phil, let's hurry. They will be following. We'll go out the back way. Our car is parked in the next street. We'll go through the alley. After, I give the police an anonymous tip. Well, is it clear, Ellen? Does it begin to make sense? Yes, Phil. David wanted out. He wanted to quit the syndicate, and they wouldn't let him. Afraid he might inform on them. So they had Slade waiting and ready, and the whisperer said, now. And Slade went after David at Judy's place, only Judy shot Slade first. Yes, it makes sense. It makes sense another way, too. How? 
What happens when the whisperer quits? He won't. I got a dragnet out for him, too. He won't quit. Not until the whole organization is exposed and destroyed. And what happens when they find out the whisperer is really Phil Gold? They won't find out. You're always so positive. You're always so sure. But one day you'll make a slip, or they'll begin to suspect. All they have to do, Phil, just suspect that Phil Gold is a whisperer. Now, this is Cedar Lake Drive. Can you spot some of the numbers? You haven't even been listening. Yes, I have, Ellen. Uh, Where are we? 1,400 blocks. And it's two streets down. Uh, Reach around behind you, sweetheart, and take out that package, will you? Yeah, that's it. What is it? Open it. That's right. I'm going to pull up here. We'll walk the rest of the way back. But what is this, Phil? Strings, rubber bands, elastic? Attached cute, to... isn't it? There's nothing cute about a gun. That's a twenty-five, a toy. A toy that can kill. Here. I'm going to put it on under my jacket. But what are all those rubber bands and things? Well, that was originally designed for a card shop, Ellen. You know, to drop aces out of a sleeve at the propitious moment. Oh, but the gun? That's my refinement. Instead of having an ace up my sleeve, I've got a twenty-five. All I have to do is drop my hand fast and the gun falls into my palm. An ace, too. An ace of spades. Phil. I want you to stay here. No. This might be dangerous. I want you to stay here. No. Now, please, honey. No. All right. We've got to hurry. I don't think we've been followed over here. It has shown up by now. Maybe we can get there before the shooting starts. That's why you've strapped on that contraption. Just precautions. Uh-huh. That's how certain you are you'll be able to get out of this without shooting. These old buildings are fire traps, Phil. Converted to rooming houses. Yes? Oh, David Clark in. How am I supposed to know? You think I keep track of all the people who go in here day in and day out? I'll never get any of my work done. If you'll just tell us what apartment he's in. Apartment? Upstairs. When you get to the top floor, there's a stairway to the attic. That's his apartment. Thank you. Thank me for nothing. Just keep the place decent. No hijinks, parties, and loud music. I got my other rumors to think about. I can't allow Yes, of course. Uh, Thank you. So far, so good. If he's up there, if they haven't found out... And Judy? She's probably with him. That's why I think they're here. Hold up. Dave. Good to work off a heavy dinner. What dinner? <laughs> Shall I knock? Well, what do we do? Just go in. Nobody home. Well, it appears the birds have flown. Hold it. Don't turn around. I've got a gun. Oh. It's quite a trick, hiding behind the door so when it's open it conceals you. That's the second time you've done that, Clark. Judy, see if they're on. All right, Jane. Up for shoulder holsters, jacket pockets, hip pockets. No, he isn't. All right, go through her purse. Excuse me. It's perfectly all right. You don't have to be polite, Judy. Just thorough. Yes. There's nothing here. All right. Back across the room, both of you. What are you trying to do, David? Who are you? My name is Gall. What do you want? How do you fit in this? I happen to be following a man by the name of Slade. Knew him a long time ago. A hoodlum, murderer, part of the syndicate. What do you know about the syndicate? Enough, David. Enough to know that anyone who gets wound up with the syndicate has taken a step he can't take back. Enough to know that if they mark someone for death, there's usually no escape. There'll be an escape this time. Not if you go about it this way. I'm here to try to help you. I don't need any help. Now, that's silly. Oh, yes. Please, can you help? Tell him to put that gun away. Oh, Dave, please. No, Judy, no. This might be just con on his part. I'm not taking any chances. You took all your chances when you worked for the syndicate. Well, I'm not working for them now. No, you're not. Where are the diamonds, David? You know an awful lot about me and the syndic and the diamonds. Now, what else do you know? Just one thing that makes any sense. Phil. Take it easy, lady. Outside in the street, a car. It's them. You brought the whole mob. They didn't follow me. How else could they get here? I found out from Hathaway. Don't you think they might have found out, too? Yeah, that's right. Well, David, what are you going to do? Oh, they wouldn't let me quit. Well, I'll see they don't get their lousy diamonds. I'll see to that. The dirty, rotten murders, I'll make them pay. And Judy? What about Judy? Will she pay, too? Judy. David's my fault. No, I... Judy, Judy. I'm coming into the house. Judy. D- darling, this whole rotten mess, it's my fault, but I can't get away. Rick, David, what are you going to do? They're coming up the stairs. I'll show you what I'm going to do. You. Me? What do you want with Ellen? She's coming out with me. Oh, sure, I'm going to get it, but I'll get a few of them first, and you're going to help. You're going to be my shield. No, David. Hold on, David. You hold on. All right, sister, come on. That's your syndicate training coming through, David, but you're not taking Ellen with you. No, who's going to stop me? 
Walker doesn't mean anything to me not to plug you now, too. Now, up you the hands. Up! All right, Debbie. Well, where did you get that gun? Judy, get back. Here. Judy, the diamonds. Keep them. David! Get back! Okay, suckers! David! Wait! Judy, I, I made him pay. <laughs> David. David, dead. Easy, Judy, easy. It would have been a miracle. You can't run away from the syndicate. But you can't run away from the police. Still a police car. I guess they took that anonymous tip. What's going on up here? Now, who are these dead men? They're blocking my doorway. I told you I run a respectable place and I don't want any trouble with the police. I'm afraid you're going to have some. Well, I'm going to call them. I don't want a bad name on my place. You're too late on both counts. Killing, shooting. That'll take a week to get this place cleaned up. Phil, what about Judy? The syndicate won't bother her anymore, but the police will want to question her. But the instructions to find Judy. To lead them to David. Oh. Judy... He was a good boy. He was. Got mixed up with him. He wanted to quit. Once you're in, there's only one way out. They took Hathaway in for questioning? Yes, in a prison term. And the two syndicate mugs that ran off in the car were killed in a gunfight with the police. You know, Denver's added it all up pretty good for someone who wasn't in on a thing. Slade and four other members of the syndicate, dead. David, dead. Hathaway, a fence for stolen diamonds. And where did that leave Judy? Well, the police have the diamonds, so the syndicate won't be interested in her anymore. I had a little talk with her. Oh? While your back was turned. You know, sweetheart, she's a real trooper. Yes, I think she'll get over this. I'm sure she will. I've got her out on bail. You've got her out? Uh Uh-huh, I'm going to be handling her case. You know, being an attorney comes in handy at times. Especially when you can have such attractive clients. Hmm? Oh? Is she attractive? I didn't notice. Why, Phil Galt, you may have been busy tonight, but you weren't blind. (laughs) You sound jealous, Ellen. Worried about my conferences with my new clients? As long as you keep them during business hours, no. Well, as a matter of fact, I have a conference scheduled for 11.30 tomorrow night. Oh. Backstage at the Lyceum Theater, after the performance of Romeo and Juliet. Thought you might like to see it. Why not? Tis better to have seen Romeo and Juliet than never to have loved at all. <laughs> Hello, New York. Central City reporting. Mission accomplished. David. based upon stories and characters created by Stetson Humphrey. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Carlton Young is starred as The Whisperer, Betty Moran as Ellen. Others in the cast were Sidney Miller, Stacey Harris, Ralph Moody, and Michael Ann Barrett. The Whisperer was written by Jonathan Twice, produced and directed by Bill Karn. Original music by Johnny Duffy. This is Don Rickles inviting you to listen next week to another exciting adventure with... <laughs> 